The New Yorker has become a go-to media outlet of the Me Too movement, with big, deeply reported scoops on Harvey Weinstein and Les Moonves yielding major results. But to some critics, a recent piece on Brett Kavanaugh's accuser fell short of that standard. Adam Riley has more. The story of the week was Christine Blasey Ford telling the Senate about an alleged sexual assault by a young Brett Kavanaugh, and Kavanaugh insisting it never happened. But days earlier, the New Yorker brought another troubling accusation to light. Deborah Ramirez, a classmate of Kavanaugh's at Yale, says that Kavanaugh thrust his genitals in her face at a dorm party and caused her to touch it without her consent. But there were some serious caveats. At first, Ramirez was reluctant to characterize Kavanaugh's role with certainty, but changed her mind after six days of carefully assessing her memories and consulting with her attorney. Also, the New Yorker has not confirmed that Kavanaugh was present at the party, which might explain why other media outlets were skeptical. Did you sort of want to push the pause button and say, are we sure this is the right thing to do? Are you okay with her story knowing she said that I was very drunk that night and there are big gaps in my memory? For their part, reporters Ronan Farrow and Jane Mayer said the piece was upfront about any uncertainty and that there is evidence supporting Ramirez's account. For weeks and months since July, there have been an email chain of Yale uh, classmates of, of Kavanaugh talking about, will this thing come out? None of which impressed Fox News' Howie Kurtz, who called Ramirez's claims highly problematic. Whether you agree may depend on your politics and how you feel about the Me Too movement. Well, to his last point there, I think it's unfortunate that getting a story properly sourced has become political. Um, you know, but, but for the broader story here, I, I just felt that it wasn't ready yet to, to be put out there to the public. I get a sense that it was if, as if you're putting together a puzzle. You know, when you're working on a puzzle, you spend days, perhaps weeks, putting a puzzle together. You get to the end, most of the picture is there, you stand up, aha, I got it, and then a couple pieces are moving, a couple, m missing rather, a couple of important pieces, maybe the eye or, you know, part of the face. Um, and the, the puzzle isn't done. You, you dig around, you look for the pieces under the table. I think they were missing pieces here that they needed to put into that puzzle before they could report it. Well, let me continue with the analogy because it seemed uh, pretty obvious to me that they had come to the conclusion that they weren't going to find the missing pieces to the puzzle unless they flung this out there in the hopes of other people coming forward and filling in some of the uh, details. This struck me as pretty thin. And that's certainly no disrespect to Deborah Ramirez, who seems to be trying to do the best she can to remember what happened. Uh, but um, it's, uh, this story really did not feel ready to be published to me. And as I said, the only reason I can think of to publish it is that they were hoping that by doing so, they could confirm it after the fact. Well, I can think of another reason, which is that the 24-7 news cycle affects print, too. They can publish it online immediately. They've had great success with their other stories that are about similar topics, also about big famous people. They're seeing results, and there's a limited window here. The Senate was going to move forward with Kavanaugh's hearing. There's, if they vote to confirm him, it's done. It doesn't matter what comes out unless you're going to go through a whole impeachment process for the Supreme Court judge, and that's, you know, we haven't even opened that can of worms. That can of worms is still on a shelf in someone else's house. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. the time frame answers everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. know, and, and I, I agree with Dan. This one felt, both Dan's, I this, think this one felt a little uncooked. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm glad from a due process standpoint that the Senate didn't take it up. I mm -hmm. felt like, you know, Christine Blasey's board's testimony was powerful enough and mm -hmm. was, and, and, and here was a person who was, as she said, 100% sure of her memories as opposed to the sort of squishiness. I know the New Yorker did its best to be transparent. I mean, to their credit, mm -hmm. they were transparent about what they didn't have about those missing puzzle pieces. But I agree that you know that that's reason to to press pause. Mm -hmm. well, there's one other key element, and that's if you look at the headline of mm -hmm. the uh, of of the the uh, the magazine article, the first thing they say is the Senate has this information as and is investigating. Mm -hmm. To me, that changes the whole nature of this. Mm -hmm. They're working about, they're writing about something that is in the hands of the Senate and the Senate is looking at it. It was the Democrats in the Senate. Mm -hmm. But to me, that changed the nature of that somewhat. And when they said they were up front, I think that was one of the things they meant. It's right there in the headline. And that, of course, they also talked about how thin it was. Compared to the other stories that Ronan has become famous for, mm -hmm. uh, Ronan Farrow, uh, certainly 
It's, it's thinner than that. It's thinner than all of the months and months of work he did on Harvey Weinstein. And Jane Mayer, who sometimes ended up being sort of an afterthought in this byline, uh, mm -hmm. is a, a fantastically experienced, much yes. more experienced than Ronan, who's yes. only 30. Mm -hmm. But she has a, we were colleagues at the Wall Street Journal. Uh, she's written books on uh, the Koch brothers. And, she's, and of course, she was deeply involved with, uh, with that other case mm -hmm. with Anita Hill. Mm -hmm. Well, she's a great reporter, but I would say the Democrats in the Senate having it really is, in this part as an atmosphere, isn't the same thing as the Senate investigating. There have been a lot of circumstances on the other side where the Republicans have investigated something in order to kind of push a news story. So that, that didn't seem dispositive to me. It, 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 was, also, it yeah. was also interesting that um, critics of the story, uh, and I'm, we're critics of the story, but some critics of the story uh, used the New York Times's inability to confirm the story on their own as a way of discrediting what the New Yorker did. And uh, Dean Baquet, the executive editor of the Times, made it clear that uh, the fact that we did not report this does not mean that we're trying to discredit the New Yorker. In fact, we were unable to get an interview with Deborah I Ramirez. do think it's interesting that the same people who are either critical or dismissive of the New York Times actually confirming things are now saying their inability to <laughs> yeah, confirm right. undermines yeah. this yeah. other story. Right. The New York Times is very careful with that. And they wanted that interview. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I wonder if just it's a sign of the times. Maybe a few years ago we wouldn't have been this uh, aggressive in moving forward with a story like this because it's, oh, oh, oh no, is this true? Is it not? Now that all these cases are out there, mm -hmm. you can be a little bit more bold, yeah. right? Because it's not, people aren't going to look at you and say, well, are you sure that happened? Mm -hmm. We know it's happening all around mm -hmm. us. So it's a different dynamic now than we had a few years yeah. ago. And I should add, yeah. it actually did come up in the hearing because mm -hmm. right, yes. some of You're the right. questioners brought up mm -hmm. things about what had happened and supposedly happened right. in the right. 